everybody could use a pause. Oh, especially you. My friend Liam was diagnosed with autism spectrum disorder when he was three. He didn't respond to his parents, would cry for five hours straight. And if there was an open door, he would run to the nearby subway station to watch the escalator for hours. And peeling him off of there? <laughs> Good luck with that. Because it was impossible to make him do or not do anything. Fast forward six years. Now at age nine, he loves to cook, play drums, and draw. He knows how to have small talks, take turns, and be interested in other people. And his mom says he's the calmest and most gentle person in his family. He is amazing. So what's the secret? What do they do? Liam used to look at his mom maybe once a day for a flash of a second. This broke her heart. She so wanted to feel connected to him. She wanted to play with him. She wanted him to smile at her, just like any other kid. Why did everything have to be so hard for them? But then she had an epiphany one day. What if, what if it was as difficult for Liam to do this as it is for a child in a wheelchair to stand up and walk. If a child in a wheelchair tried to stand up and walk to her, she would be so happy that he even tried. So why does she feel sad and disappointed when it comes to Liam's eye contact? So she decided to really appreciate his effort and celebrate it anytime he made any attempt to look at her. So the next time he gave her a glance, she said, thank you, Liam. Thank you so much for looking at mama's eyes. I am so happy that you looked at me. Liam stopped, turned around, and looked at his mom once again. This blew her mind. She loved him so much. She would do anything for him. And she thought she accepted him completely. But she realized that she didn't. She felt disappointed when he looked away because what he was doing wasn't good enough to make her happy. When she made that subtle shift in her mindset, Liam immediately responded to her. What Liam's parents did was the exact opposite of what most of us do. Instead of trying to shift Liam's behaviors, they looked deep inside themselves. They kept doing this, and each time they dug out a hidden belief and changed their perspective, Liam made a leap in his development. I work with a lot of parents of children with ADHD and autism. And parents, the biggest secret to success is this. Your thoughts are the keys to unlocking your child's potential. And not only that, they have the power to shift the dynamic in any relationship you'd like to improve, like your relatives, a difficult boss, or a coworker. My teenage neurotypical son loves to play games on his computer. It was a daily struggle to get him to stop. He used to give me one of these. Oh. That made me want to just grab his neck until I used the pause process. P A W S. Pause as in stop. A is to ask, W is to wait, and S is to 
switch. Anytime you feel any negative emotion, that is a sign that you have an open wound somewhere. So P, pause. <laughs> Easier said than done. The little wakako in me was saying, no, I don't want to pause. This is his fault. Listen, I hear you, but I'm starting to resent my own son. We've got to give this a try. And she reluctantly agreed. So next, ask, why are you so angry? <laughs> because my son doesn't listen to me. Okay, what is it exactly that makes you angry? Him rolling his eyes. Notice my reason at this point is all about my son, but you've got to keep digging deeper until you get to the I statement, that raw and vulnerable emotion that little you felt when you made up your own story about the world. So how do you feel when he rolls his eyes? I feel like I don't matter. Bingo, there it is. There's the little Wakako feeling like she didn't matter when my mom was busy taking care of my baby sister who had health issues. When a child feels pain, she creates a belief around that pain. And that belief is reinforced every time she feels that pain. And over time, it becomes a huge monster inside. I reacted to my son's eye rolling with a huge emotional energy because it poked my I don't matter monster. I couldn't believe it. This was all about me? And all this time, I thought it was all about my son. So next, W to weigh. Do I want to keep this monster or do I want to let it go? My son is a teenager. It's practically his job to roll his eyes. <laughs> so I do matter. I decided to let that monster go. Next, S to switch. I thank the monster for trying to protect me for all these years and switched my old belief with the new one. I matter. This was a game changer for me. I mean, literally. Because my perspective switched, my son's behavior no longer triggered me in the same way it used to. Then the energy I carried with me changed. My facial expressions, my tone of voice, my words changed. And do you know what else changed? My son's reactions. He no longer sees me as his enemy. I'm more of a slightly annoying and uncool ally for him. I'll take that. When you truly understand that your thoughts are the keys to unlocking your child's potential and use the pause process. Pause, ask, weigh, and switch you open the door to a whole new realm of being where you grow with your child, with joy. And this applies to any relationship. Now that you know how to take a pause, it's time for you to really take a pause. Thank you.